ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Joe the Flaming here, and we're here to bring you guys a very special battle tonight. We are live on twitch.tv slash Joe the Flaming while we are doing this team builder slash recording. And y'all, we freaking made it. That was 32 of some of the strongest draft league competitors in the NCP SummerSlam. We freaking made the Elite Eight, y'all. We freaking made the Elite Eight. I did not see that coming. I mean, both of our wins were 1-0, which, honestly, it means we kind of got a little bit long. I'll be honest. It, I mean, 1-0s, I mean, one thing here, one thing there, it all goes all, all over the place. Um, but we, we made it, guys. We made it to the round of eight. So, pretty much, let me put it this way. If we win, so right here, you see our matchup against the Montreal Milotics and Coach Matt O'Shea, one of the coolest dudes in draft league, one of the best draft league battlers I've seen in my time uh, doing draft league. Whoever wins this is guaranteed getting at least a little bit of cash because the NCP SummerSlam, they said the top four get, like, at the end of the I forget exactly what they, what they said about uh, who gets what there. Um, but we're going up against Matt. If you guys have seen his work before, which I personally have, I have seen his work, I've seen his battles, I know he's live on twitch.tv slash Matt O'Shea right now, so if you guys wanted to, again, you know, we're recording this on our own end, so technically you can't go on there while uh, we're recording because the battle will be up, you know, at a later time and whatnot. But at the time of this recording, he is live on his channel. And I'm just now realizing I accidentally put you up there. What are you doing? Hi, uh, saying hi over there to everybody, the team. Uh, but we're going up against Matt. Let me put it that way. We're going up against Matt. Great opponent. Great guy. Very strong. So let me bring up his team. We're going to break it down best we can. And now I'm going to show you guys a team that I hope can give me a chance. So. Looking at Matt's team, he has Tornadius Theory, Tapu Koko, Galarian Slokin, Swampert, Spectrier, Silvali, Tangelo, and Dunsparce. Now, of these eight, I would think I'd have a better chance of winning the lottery than seeing a Pokemon that drills into the ground that we can only find in the... Maniac Tunnel on Three Island and Fire Red Elite Green. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's I'm sure that's like that's a better chance. If you have a better chance to find a Dunsparce there, then I probably will have Matt bringing Dunsparce to this match. If I I mean he's got great synergy. If you guys have seen his work before, like I said, I, I'm I'm basically popping him up right now. But he even did a video on draft tips and tricks. So if you guys want, go watch that. Go watch all the draft competitors. Watch every kind of draft you want. Because if it wasn't for these guys, including me, I don't even think I would have made it this far. Because I'm coming up on one year of this channel. By the way, to all the 108 subscribers, thank you. Thank you very much. From the bottom of my heart, I did not see that number coming. I, I really thought I was going to be anywhere from like, I don't know, 15 to 20 if I'll be fully transparent with y'all. Um... But going off of Matt's team, Tornado Therian, Tapu Koko, and Spectria. Right there, those three mods outspeed my entire team except for one mod. And that's Aerodactyl, who speed ties with Spectria and Tapu Koko, assuming we're both speed nature 252 EVs. So, have to be really careful with them. But Spectria, Grimne, we know how good that uh, ability is. We know, how, I mean, granted, yes, it's not. Uh, Shadow Rider Calyrex, but it's still strong. Spectrum is still strong. So I have to be very careful with that. Silvali, because he has Silvali, he has access to all 18 Silvali. Which one he brings is a mystery. It's basically like preparing for a Mew. But Mew's probably a little bit easier than a Silvali because you kind of, like, no. Like Mew's, Mew can learn every single move in existence. And that's interesting over there. I don't really care about that. Uh, Swampert, normally that's been his rocks. If he ever did Stealth Rocks, he's going to use Swampert for it. 
Uh, and he's used Flip Turn in the past before. I've seen him use Yawn and Toxic with it. Uh, but this is in previous draft leagues. This has nothing to do with MCP because he's used Swamper before. Uh, in like uh, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, all that stuff. Uh, Galarian Slow King. I, I mean, you guys just saw. I, I again, this battle is going up past the YCL upload, so you guys just saw we survived a Galarian Slow King with Regenerator. Can we go two for two? Eh, we'll see. Uh, but Tapu Koko also strong. Can have specs. Uh, Thunderbolt, Dazzling him. I think he gets Deep Fog. I know round one he went Choice Band on this thing, which was interesting. But that just shows why he's good. Because he brings tech. Uh, so if I had a... I, I mean, maybe he brings Tangela with Eviolite. Uh, I don't really I don't really expect that, if I'll be fully honest with you guys. I really think he's going to bring the top six on his team. Just because they, I mean, they really have great matchups against me. Like, if we're putting it on paper, I, I might say that his team is better than mine. But that's because he knows what he's doing. I just, I, I pick. Like, you guys saw my team. How we managed to survive John and his team. Now we did survive a tornadoes. We did do that. Uh, we've survived two Kangaskhans. Uh, we we managed to make it pretty far. Like. Would I love to win the NCP? Absolutely. But I'll chalk it up to a success right now because we made it further than even I thought. I thought we were going to... If I'll be honest with you guys, I legitimately thought we were going to be one and done. Just because I know how strong these competitors are. Like, just on that alone. So to be able to make it to the round of 16, and then we showcase the YCL, uh, Sally and myself. Great battle, by the way. You guys got to check that out. I just hope to do that with Matt because... We came close once, and I think it was IDL. Uh, him and I were both in the semifinals, opposite sides of the spectrum. We would have won, we would have matched up for the championship, but we both won. So, that's going to be the team that Matt has. Let me show you guys what I'm doing. Uh, I'm changing up the nicknames again. I've changed them up all tournament. So, I'm, I'm hoping that this, you know, does, uh, this does something. Uh, all of my names, with the exception of Lapras, are based on wrestling. Because I kind of follow, you know, wrestling a little bit. Uh, I, I, I'll be honest. I mean, I, I've watched WWE. I've watched AEW. I mean, Monday night, it was pretty damn cool to reminisce from when I was young. I mean, yes, I'm, I'm 24. But when I got into wrestling, man, just hearing Jeff Hardy with no more words by Endeavor after, man, I, I felt something, man. I felt something with like that. Because it just... It just felt so good to hear that music again. That was one of the best entrance themes of all time. So, it was, it was a, it was a fun thing for that. Uh, but getting back to the team, Aerodactyl nicknaming it Falcon Arrow because it's a signature move that some of the wrestlers do. Basically, it's a, it's a suit, it's a suplex usually or a superflex uh, off the top rope which is then turned into what they call a Michinoku driver, which is basically they just pick you up and they uh, twist you and you land. Usually it's a pinning combination. 99% of the time, people kick out too. But let's be real. We, we know how wrestling is. It's story-based entertainment, and they pick and they kick you out of two. So, you, it's basically the same setup. 204 speed. I'm baiting on the chances that there's no scar. I'm baiting on the chance of no scar. Because if there's no Scarf on either Speck or Coco, uh, surprisingly, Dual Wing Beat if it hits can Oko the Speck Trier in one shot and break a Sash, and EQ will take out Coco. Uh, it's assuming that they are not Scarf. I do not know if Matt would do that, but someone tells me he might. Uh, Plizzy Open is next. That's the Lapras. AV, Freeze Dry, Hydro Pump, Ice Shard, and Avalanche. You're probably thinking to yourself, what in the Sam you know what is this guy doing running Avalanche? Does he even know what that move is? I looked it up. Avalanche is a base 60 power move with a negative 4 priority. So basically, even if Lapras is faster than his mod, which is highly unlikely, 
he will go last in a given turn. And in that event, if he takes a hit from any move, assuming it's not toxic or rocks or spikes or stuff like that, if he takes physical damage or special damage, I don't know. But he has to take a hit. He just has to take a hit, and Avalanche goes from 60 to 120. So it, it, it helps. It can help. Uh, but I just didn't want to do Thunderbolt again. I really didn't want to do like Thunderbolt. I didn't want to do Dragon Pulse. I didn't want to do Drill Run. I didn't want to do... Uh, I thought about Life Do. I thought about it, but I was like, eh, we with the AV. I can't really do that. Uh, but that's gonna be Lapras this week. I hope, and I hope, I hope it works. I mean, uh, it has a chance. It, it, everything, pretty much everything has a chance every given week. It's much like sport. Next up, this is probably the ultimate uh, Tapu Koko counter. Judas Effect, the Electivire, nicknamed after Chris Jericho's finishing move, which is basically just a spinning back elbow. Uh, but let's be real, Jericho is a goat. He is a demo god. He is le champion, and he is a. I mean, he's he's 50 and he's still wrestling in AEW right now. So, uh, I bring him rising voltage, psychic, volt switch, and charge. Charge. It's there for because I just need a fourth move. Uh, had darkness Lyria took it off. Had thunder punch took it off. Had Cross Chop took it off. Had Fire Punch took it off. So I figured, what the hey, let me just use Charge. Uh, I thought about Taunt, thought about Sub. Uh, but the main thing is that if I can predict this right, and I can get the Motor Drive to activate in Electric Terrain, Electivire with Rising Voltage can do a pretty good amount of damage, y'all. It can do a lot of damage. With Rising Voltage. By the way, that is a shout out to Sen. He is the one who recommended Rising Voltage. Thank you, Sen. Let's see if it works. Next up, making his debut for the Talon Flames in the NCP Summer Showdown. Roman Reigns, the Incineral. Ah, uh, I mean, let's be real. Roman Reigns right now, he's the tribal chief, he is the champion, and he is a badass mother. Freaking heel. So, what better nickname for the heel Pokemon than the top heel? In, well, I'll, I'll rephrase it. The top heel in WWE. Uh, I gave him leftovers. I gave him. To, I thought about AV for spec, but surprisingly, here's the fun thing. Uh, <laughs> spec even at plus six can't knock out this thing. That's what's set. With a shot. I mean, it needs Hyper Beam to do that. Because uh, Mud Shot at plus six won't knock it out. And Shadow Ball at plus six won't knock it out. And that's a stab move. It needs Hyper Beam at plus six to knock out an Incineroar with this investment. Uh, but even so, does he really want to stay in on a spec with this thing? All you gotta do is knock it off. That thing is almost guaranteed knocked out. And then U-turns there to keep, you know, for pivot. Fire Punch is there. Uh, and Thunder, Thunder Punch is there just for extra tech. Uh, but he's the top heel in WWE. You can all agree on that. The top heel in wrestling is arguably Maxwell Jacob Friedman, also known as MJF. Or in Victini's case, MJ Fireball. Uh, Bolt Strike, V-Create, Glaciate, and U-Turn with a Life Orb uh, to maximize some damage. Get U-Turn in there, Glaciate to lower some speed. V-Create, this move is so freaking broken when it hits. It is so freaking broken. I, I, I mean, yes, it has a negative thing of the minus one defense, special defense, and speed, but you're going to base 180 with a Life Orb power boost. Well, if I was having a choice band on it, I'm pretty sure I could old call a Swampert in one shot. And that thing is resistant. Uh, but Victini will be interesting this week for sure. And last but not least, you see I nicknamed Electivire Judas Effect. Jericho, with his 
uh, Labors of Jericho that he's doing now with MJF as a storyline or whatnot. I guess next week he's facing some deathmatch dude named Nick Gage. I watched the dark side of the ring. Holy crap. Deathmatches are scary. They are scary, y'all. Uh, but Jericho's bringing what he calls the pain maker. Personal. I guess that's something that he did in New Japan. I, I don't know. I don't follow New Japan. All I know is that they've had a couple of Americans over there. They had the IWGP titles and whatnot. I know those are like the most prestigious titles in wrestling and all that stuff. I know only like a few Americans or people outside of Japan have actually ever held those titles before. So, uh, but I'm giving a choice scarf this week and 92 speed. The reason I'm giving 92 is because assuming he's not scarf on spec or Coco, 92 speed with the scarf outspeed both of them by one point. By one single point. So, Sludge Wave, Oka. Shadow Ball, Oka. Thunderbolt on Tornado Spherian in Electric Terrain set up by Top of Coco, presumably an Oka. Energy Ball on Swampert if it's not Rhino Berry, Oka. It can be a, it can be a, a decent threat, guys. Um, but like I said, this is the team. I'm hoping that it works. We're going to get connected with Matt. We're going to go from there, y'all. And I'll see you guys at the battle. All right, guys. We're live. We're here for it. Round of eight. Atlanta Talent Flames. Montreal Milotics. Brings the six we thought. Brings Swamper, Coco, King, Speck, Sovali, and Torn Theory. Alright. I like it. Let's go with it. Only negative matchup is is a Coco lead. Oh, my heart is pounding right now. Jill, that's Swamper. You just click freeze dry right here. As he goes for rocks, you are fine with that. Thank you. 
for me. Does not do enough. I'm gonna go for Hydro Pump. Predict the switch. EQ. Alright, so we take the first KO of the match. But I think that I think that was a sack I think that was a sack right there. Because he wrote it. Swamper did exactly what it was supposed to do. Actually survive right here. I'm gonna go for hydro pump here. Archimedes, that is you. How much are you going to do? Not a lot. A freeze! A freeze! Oh my god! Oh, I thought. Let's see if we can beat this attack. Unfortunately, we did not. That does nothing. He is physically defensive. And it's helmets. Okay. Lapras has done its job. Let 
He was gonna go for a freeze dry here. He's probably gonna switch or not. So nobody takes the. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! I'm so lucky with this move. I am so lucky with this. We're going for gold switch here. He withdraws. Falling, that is... Savala Dragon? Yeah, Dragon. is still doing that much damage is a down. That's you. I can't, I, I, I feel like it's got a nasty pot. I feel like it does. Much shot. Does nothing. Going to knock off here. Withdraws, probably brings back Savala. Yep. I kind of got to keep him sending a lot. That's the, that's the strongest thing for... Don't 
did a lot more than I thought of base 95 speed. He withdraws into Archimedes. Psychic here. He's going to sack this thing. Draws. Icarus, that's. Mm, I could have got. Could have got a switch. I could have got a volt switch here. I'm also okay with swapping in the taking a U-turn here or a knock. U-turn. I was really hoping that would knock it out. Now he's going to bring in Spec. Presumably. No, that's you. So I'm just gonna click B create and so close. I know I'm fast. Okay, no, I count to be one point fast. If it's Scar, I 
then I lose. Question is, do I bait it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it if I. I'm fast. What are you? Nothing. You are. You are dead. Is what you are. Alistor, that's spec. Hits. We knock out Spec on a crit. The electricity disappears from the battlefield. Icarus, that's torn. I'm gonna click Stone Edge again. Stone Edge hits. We knock out Torn. Oh my god. Are we actually about to do this? Fallen, that's so volley. Just click Earthquake. Don't even worry about accuracy. So volley's down. Archimedes, it's frozen. Earthquake. And ladies and gentlemen, the Talon Flames have beaten the Milotics and we're in the final four! Oh my god! GG's, dude. I'm saying this with the face scan. Good game to you, dude. That was insane. Oh, I knew you were a great battler, dude. I knew you were. I'm just like, I can't, I can't believe it, dude. Oh my god. Listen, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like, comment down below, go and follow Matt, and we'll see you guys for the final freaking. Y'all, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. We're here for the post game press conference of the NCP SummerSlam round of eight. And my guest for this battle, he's a good friend. Well, I, I personally consider him a good friend in draft league community, but he is one of the best battlers I've ever faced. And I I'm, I'm just I'm grateful to have even gotten a chance to battle him. We had a chance a long time ago, but Sven and Brendan prevented that from happening. What better way to do it than an NCP? Montreal Myloptics, Matt O'Shea, welcome onto the stream, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. A um, little salty, but it is what it is. You played a good game. Dude, I'm, I'm just 
I'm grateful as all hell for for what happened today. Like I I I can't first off I can't thank you enough just for even the battle itself. Like that that's the first thing. But it's like um I, I did not ex- I did not expect this dude. I, I I really I'll be honest, I thought I was gonna my run was gonna end against one of the best players in the in draft. I'll be honest, man. I I felt much better about this matchup than every other matchup I had. I thought my matchup against Howler was good, not great. I thought my matchup against Shadow was very, very, very difficult, and I managed to pull them both out. But this one, like, you have no answer for Coco. You have no answer for Spectrier, and I felt really good. Yeah, like... I just... It's just super frustrating that the freeze dry got the freeze on me, because I slack off that turn. I've been in such a good spot, but also kudos to you for going to Aerodactyl on that uh, that turn there when I went into to, to Torn. That was the I made a pretty big misplay the turn before, and it ended up being the opening that you needed to just get the W there. Yeah, and like I'll be honest with you, Matt. Um, you know how I think you battled Sen before, correct? Uh, I battled Sen before, yes. Uh, I just battled him not even two hours before you and I just had this match. I have gotten so damn lucky with freeze dry today. It is not even funny. I froze his maw while with freeze dry, and then I froze your slow king twice. And I'm just like, what in the hell is going on here with this move? Like, I don't get it. Like, you have a better. I feel like you have a better chance of getting freeze dry to hit than focus blast. Hitting or no for freeze try to get the freeze, then you have focus blast to hit. That's what it felt like. I'm not gonna lie. Last week I went for one focus blast. I really needed it and I missed it. And now we got the double freeze. So it it, it does make sense. It does make sense that freeze dry is more awesome. Um, and and I had a I had a I'll be honest. Like I, I said it in um in the preview that I did. Um when it came when it came to your team, I had a feeling the lead was gonna be swampered every day of the week. I I just I had that I had a feeling just because uh Rox is like a at least you know I'll, it it'd be wrong to say we probably didn't scout each other from watching previous matches or whatever so it's like uh we kind we kind of you know knew our uh kind of like tendencies and whatnot so I kind of had a feeling that Rox were going to be what you wanted and uh given Swampert speed for Lapras cuz they're both Base sixty was definitely was definitely key there because I didn't I don't think I put any uh, any speed no, on, you on didn't. my lappers I don't I don't think I did uh, no I did not yeah I just put a little bit of speed there just in case that's why I had left over um and Kevin yeah I'm the, yeah Kevin Berry was so I was originally Shuckaberry specifically for Aerodactyl and for for Electivire and then I changed it to Kevin Berry because I felt like I had Electivire in check with Silvalli. And same thing with Aerodactyl. With a combination of Silvalli with Slow King with, um, with Scar Spectrier and Swamp Earth, I felt like I'd be fine. Uh, the problem was when you led Lapras and you got the freeze dry off, which again, that was like the worst possible leave for me. Everything else that you led with, I would have been fine with because I had the, uh, I had the, the um, Rindo Berry or any grass attacks, which you didn't even bring. So I felt good about that, but leading off with Lapras specifically was just so, so bad. And it really put me off from a bad start, because I needed to get up rocks against you. Swampert's only only role was get up rocks and maybe take a hit or pivot around for other mons. And that's so, it. I, I, and it makes perfect sense. Now, if Gengar had been the lead, because as you can see, I sent you the team, uh, it did have Energy Ball. Would that have changed your mindset? Would you try to knock it out with Earthquake and then go for rocks? What do you mean? What do you mean? If I do that with, with what? With uh, with Gengar, would you have used Earthquake turn one, knowing no, that Rhino Fairy no. would have allowed you to survive the Energy Ball and then take out Gengar turn one and then hit Stealth Rock on turn two? Definitely not. I would not uh, because the potential for you going for or you expect me to be Sash, for example, is too high. Uh, if I get tricked to Scar for whatever and then I can't go for Rocks, it is not good. I think just me going for rocks, getting them up, especially seeing your team having Cinnaror, having Victini is super important. I felt like I could get rid of the boots 
on Incineroar whenever I really wanted to, and I didn't think that Aerodactyl would carry Defog. I thought it might carry Rocks. I didn't think it would carry Defog at all, though. Um, yeah, I, I, I was uh, advised about maybe doing Rocks or something like that, Rocks in three moves, and I was just like, I mean, your, your team just doesn't really like have a Rock weakness, per, per se. Like, I mean, the only one you had that really was afraid of Rocks is Tornado's Theory, and even then, all you gotta do is a U-turn, and you pretty much, I, I think, if I recall, Regenerator does, what, 30% of the health? and 33. So I'd still gain, like, 8%. Yeah, so, I mean, eventually it'll it'll uh, chip away and whatnot, but uh, still, I mean, a plus 8% difference could be the difference and whatnot. Um, yeah. But I mean, I did say, by the way, in my in my recording that I was like, wait, that Glacier did way too little. It did way too little. I had no idea why you were running Glacier. I'm still looking at my team. Like, it doesn't make sense to me why that is your was your move of choice, um, especially because if you're expecting, like, Sil Valley Dragon, then you run Dazzling Gleam. That does more than Glaciate. Obviously, there's a speed drop chance, but, like, you are a physical Victini. And I was like, is he bulky? Because that did so little damage. But no, you're just physical life orb with one special move in Glaciate. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I did not know that until you just said it now because I didn't really look at, at the moves. I just said, okay, Glaciate. I mean, it has a super effective thing against Tornadus and it can lower speed if Spectrier was uh, Scarf, which it was. I mean, it could help out a little bit by making it minus one, uh, but I don't know how. Let me see something. Spectrier... Choice scarf. We'll just throw it out there, and we'll pull up uh, gang my Gengar at minus one. We'll just because we're gonna throw it out there with a hundred and forty-eight. Okay, so Gengar would have outspent at minus one. My my what my Spectre? Yes, because we were both yeah hundred percent yeah. Uh, scarf brings up to plus one Gengar and then drops down to to neutral because of the Glaciate. So yeah, it works, but like you were you were never gonna take a shadow ball from me. Like my I was timid. So it, it it unless I was switching in hard on it, which again I wouldn't do because I'd have to expect a V create I could expect a V create and V create comes out and basically just lose it, which is not great. I think that like I'll be I'll be honest, the the opening that you got was key, but I made a really, really crucial, crucial misplay against your Electivire. After I have to U-turn off with Tornadus. I should never, ever, ever have gone into Coco. I should have gone into Spectre because I clicked Shadow Ball once, and then if you go into Incineroar, then fine. At least you're not into Aerodactyl, and I can wear you down. And my switch is probably so Valley. You can't set up on that because I have Thunder Wave. But because I went specifically Tornadus, I couldn't outspeed, so I couldn't go for the uh, for the taunt on you to shut down your 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 attack. That was it. And at the very end, like I. At the, at the very end, if you miss a Stone Edge, then I had a shot still with uh, with Spectrier as long as you didn't crit or get a high roll. But like that was once you got set up, that was my only out. Yeah, like I was. Uh, I, I again, I, I've, I've been getting really fortunate with with all, with the uh, accuracy and whatnot because we can, again we can all agree if a move in one hundred percent accurate, it's fifty percent accurate, and even then it's uh, a, it's a roll sometimes because. I'm I'm still trying. I, I know what the rules said, but it's like, uh, if you would if somebody ran lax incense, just hypothetically speaking, or bright powder, that's considered the evasion. Yeah, you're not allowed that, correct? You're not allowed that. You're not okay. Just just had a figured I'd, I'd verify that because I've been that's been racking my brain this whole time. Cause I wasn't sure if like they counted those items or not, but I mean, I I, I literally just battled like I said, I just battled Sen and. He used a full incense trick on Galarian Slowking, if you can believe that. Interesting. Uh, I mean, the Kebia berry that like you said you said you were gonna run Shaka, but then you ran Kebia. Uh, yeah. So in case I, in case I volt switched or discharged on the Lapras, for example, honestly, I really wanted to go for the uh, the discharge on that or the volt switch rather on the Lapras, not the discharge. But I just thought you still have a, a Lapras around. It's still decently bulky. You can take a hit or two if you want to. I didn't confirm that you were assault at that point. I was like, okay, he could probably be boot still, so he could just switch in. Uh, and I can always just be fine. So I was expecting you to switch out into the Electivire. So I went for the U-turn there. And 
it ends up costing me because I don't do as much damage to Lapras, meaning you get another chance to freeze me. But if you did go into Electivire and you have the motor drive off, it boosts your speed by one. Meaning you could Earthquake and get the Oko on me. Okay? Not Oko, but you can do a lot of damage to me. So that's why I expected I want to go Shuck up. Yeah. So I took it off was because Aerodactyl has Unnerve. And you didn't even run Unnerve. So if I kept Shuck up, I would have actually survived the, the Earthquake. And I would have taken the like, Stone Edge too. I was thinking, like, you know what? I hope he thinks I'm Shaka because he's pressure and he's not a nerve. So I can just go for a Volt Switch freely, get the Oko, and then uh, can I always take a plus one Stone Edge, my Cocoa Spread. Yeah, and, like, I, I wasn't sure if, like, um, if, if, like, maybe, like, one of them was going to be Sashed or whatnot. So it's, like, maybe he, I mean, if he's going down, he's going to take something down uh, with him or something like that. Uh, I mean, the Rocky Helmet, I did not know that Avalanche uh, triggers it. I was surprised too. I mentioned it because I was playing a BBL game, and for some reason, um, Kieran Black's Bolt Strike is not a contact move, even though it looks like it. And Avalanche is a contact move when it's like you're not touching them at all. Yeah, like that's that that's strange to say because literally, I I, I you because I I brought Avalanche. I was like, I didn't want to do uh, another like Thunderbolt. I didn't want to do Dragon Pulse, even though. In hindsight, that probably could have helped out with Savali. I didn't want to do drill run, so I was just like, "What the hell? Let, let me let me try some kind of fun tech, you know, just so that way, you know, give give Matt, you know, a little extra, uh, little extra fun for for his match." And I was like, "Okay, let me try Avalanche, so I can take a hit from you and do 120 damage, even though Lapras's physical attack is less to, less than desired, but." I figure, you know, wh- why not? Let me let me just try something against it. Yeah, no, I get that. It's it's not it's not terrible. It's like it's a, it's a solid solid opportunity for like you to maybe I go for a U turn or something or a Volt or whatever, and then you and went for Avalanche on something that you get really good damage off on. I don't know what it would be, but um, I don't think what would I go? Maybe into Slow King. I was more physically defensive anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. But um, regardless, it's, it was just an option to have that was there. Uh, you really only needed freeze dry. That was the only move you really needed against me. I was really worried about a trapping set with whirlpool and pear song. But as soon as you went for hydro pump on the uh, on the, the the what is it called swamper, I was like, I'm fine. I can just go into slow king and beat you one v one because I was pretty sure you wouldn't have pear song at that point. Yeah, because I, I I was like, truthfully, here here's what I was thinking with with that when I used hydro pump. I, I wanted to do freeze dry, but I was just like, what if maybe he has something in the back for this? Like, uh, may, maybe like like a wish set or something, because I don't know if any of your mods do get wish or not. No. I, they might. No. Um, but I was like, what, what if he has something like that? And like, like if Sloking gets wish, hypothetically, and then you teleport back into Swampert and it gets the wish which would give 100 HP and bring you probably back up to full. Well, I had rest. Um, my plan was the toxic things, and I ended up changing that for a rest. I was like, oh, yeah, I can run rest, because if I use rest and I'm not in terrain, I'll get my health back, I'll be asleep, then I bring in Coco at some point, you probably go into Gengar, because I expected you to be Scarf, I can take the Kebia Berry attack, or even then, I don't have to risk it anymore. I just go into a max HP Swampert, I wake up because I'm in electric terrain now, and then I can proceed to just do my thing. But that's not how it actually works. Um, you stay asleep. As you, know, you just can't use rest in terrain. You can't fall asleep, but you can stay asleep in terrain. Uh, I will say, though, the the Aerodactyl being pressure, I did not expect. I was like, you're going to be on nerve 100%, and you're pressure, and I was like, damn. Why? So why are you pressure? If I'll be honest, I was thinking Rockhead, but Aerodactyl doesn't get head smash. No. So I was like, all right, let me let, let me try pressure. You know, maybe they'll just like like bait out any 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 moves that he has that you know are low PP per se. Like um, it's, I mean, Hyper Beam only has eight and whatnot. Uh, Shadow Ball's got twenty four. Uh. I mean, just to, just like, I guess, like, stall out turns or whatnot and maybe force a struggle if I was lucky. Uh, I think I think for a Pokemon like Aerodactyl, I really want to sweep. If I was Shuckaberry, if I stayed Shucka on Coco, 
you lost Aerodactyl. And my Cocoa was still at like 25%, but even then, I didn't need to have a lot of health because if you KO me with, with Gengar, I go into Spectrier and I just chip down your team more. So I felt like at that point, if you were unnerved, then it was 100% sealed up. You can go for Earthquake freely, not to worry about anything. But if I was Shaka there, then the game would have been been not over, at least, at that point. Which makes sense. And, and, and like, I, like I've said, uh, like going into this match, dude, I, I, I knew how good you, you are at battling because, again, I've, I've been watching your, your batches and whatnot. I'm part of the server and everything. By the way, if you guys haven't yet, follow uh, Matt. Go and join his Discord server and follow, join the Ocean. It is a great group of people, great community. They have speed tours. They've got uh, the Ocean League, which probably will be resuming in the near future. I'm, I'm going to speculate on that. Uh, you can, you, I mean, you can talk with Matt. You can get some assistance with him. Uh, but the most important thing that I always do at the end of these, Matt, and I do this with every person. Let me just pull it up real quick here. It's the computer can be just a little bit slow. Got to, got to love slow computers and whatnot. Uh, here it is. It's in the description of all my videos. If you guys are going to come check over my side of the battle as well on YouTube, then you can take a look there, and uh, it's the description there as well. Uh, I do also stream all my games on Twitch, so if you're watching Joe here, I have another league that's going to be starting up on Twitch as well, so if you're watching him on Twitch, watch him go to the semifinals of the NCP, maybe check out uh, me doing some PAC content, PAC content. And if you guys also want, I have it up here as I always do. Matt's... Uh... Matt's YouTube channel is right here. You see he's got 1.19k subs. Let's get him to he's he's got a goal right now, guys. He's on you he's on Twitter right now. His team his name is Matt O'Shea. Hashtag road to 2K. Let's let's help him get to that 2K goal, guys. Let's get him to 2K. Give him a sub. Watch all these videos. He's got great videos. And also right here, we got a nice join button here. If you want, join the ocean on YouTube. I should be my hype man right now. Damn. Appreciate the I kind am, of words. Well, I am the Pickens King, so, you know. Pickens yeah, you are. King, the King. King. Yeah. Joe has done a lot of help with us for, for Ocean. He has been the man responsible for the Pickens, which has been an absolute success for Season 3. And when Season 4 comes along, if he's going to be an admin, okay? He's going to be able to have a lot more responsibility if he wants it. But uh, to interact with not just Joe, but myself as well, and a really awesome community, Ocean is definitely a place to be. If you want to get better at Draft League, it'll help out. Guarantee it. Absolutely, guys. Like I said, thank you to Matt for a great battle. Thank you so much for joining him. Sub to him on YouTube. Follow him on Twitter. Follow him on Twitch. I'll have links to all of those in the description below. And we will see you guys next time. Congratulations. You made it all the way to the end of this video. I thank you very much for your support on this current video. If you want to interact with me more... Check out my socials right here. That's my Twitch, that's my YouTube, that's my Twitter. You can comment on any one of them and tell me how good I was, how bad I was, anything you want. Goodbye.